Welcome to Lunch with Legacy Leaders, a weekly talk show with local and national thought leaders on issues impacting the black community. Now introducing our host, Ms. Anne-Marie Sorrell. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Lunch with Legacy Leaders. I'm your host, Anne-Marie Sorrell, President and CEO of the Mosaic Group. Before we like get started with our broadcast, I'd like to thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible. Thank you to Broward Health, AARP, the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County, and the African American Black Alzheimer's Disease Initiative at the John P. Hussman Institute for Human Genomics, University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. If you or someone you know is experiencing loss of memory or memory problems, please contact their research team for more information at 877-686. 6444. Now, before we get started, I do want to give a special shout out. If you all missed our show last week with the three chief medical directors um, from Baptist Health, Jackson Memorial, and um, um, Memorial Health System, you missed a great show. So make sure you go back and watch that show. But I want to give a special shout out to them for giving me information that was much needed. Um, and thanks, thank you to Dr. Tondra Anderson Rhodes who helped me navigate the process to get the monoclonal um, antibody therapy infusion. So thank you uh, to the team of doctors that was with us last week. So this week we are joined by whew, a great lineup of professionals um, where we're gonna be discussing the state of black businesses in South Florida. So please help me welcome Ms. Shahiwa Jarrett, who is the president of the Black Chamber of Commerce for Broward County. Mr. Eric Gordon Knowles, who's the president of the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Grassford Grassford Smith, who's the president of the Palm Beach County Black Chamber of Commerce, and Mr. Rick Beasley, who's the president of the uh, Miami Beacon Council. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. So, um, of course, you all are no strangers to legacy. Um, I think all but maybe Grassford has been with us. Um, on the show before. Unfortunately, I think that's true, but we're, we're gonna fix that today. We're gonna fix that today. So welcome Grassford and welcome back everyone. Um, so we're, we're in for a very special show. Um, we, you know, anytime we can talk about businesses in our community and what is happening, um, that's, you know. So with that being said, we're talking about the state of black businesses. Let's first talk about your organization and the role that you play um, in supporting, promoting, empowering, um, and creating opportunities for um, black businesses within your respective region. And so we're gonna start with um, Shahiwa on, uh, the, for the, the Black Chamber of Commerce for Broward County. Okay, well, thank you all for having me. Um, I'm pleased to be here this afternoon. Uh, and as we talk about this very important topic about Black businesses during National Black Business Month, uh, the Broward County Black Chamber plays a vital role here in our region. And the fact that we focus um, in, I would say, three primary areas, one being, and the first and foremost being advocacy, um, that's a very important role. We want to make sure that we're liaising with um, public entities as well as private entities to create opportunities for our Black businesses to contract, uh, as well as making sure that there is equity in the process. So if our businesses aren't getting those opportunities, then they're not growing, they can't hire more people. And so that is an extremely um, huge focus for us to make sure there's equity in that process and our Black businesses get contracts. Uh, secondly, um, we're into making sure we're educating our members so that they're, they know the latest trends, they understand what they need to do to operate their business effectively and efficiently. Um, and a part of that process, education process, is making sure that they're certified, uh, if they don't have accounting systems, providing some guidance there, and providing the technical assistance that small businesses need because you know, a lot of these business leaders are owners are trying to do everything, but they can't. So we try to make sure they have the technical assistance to do it right. And then lastly, I would say we focus a lot on promoting our um, businesses. You know, I hear a lot about, oh, we don't know where black businesses are. Well, guess what? I don't want to hear that anymore. We have a directory on our website to make it easy to find. We promote our businesses um, on our social media. We have events and different things where we you know, educate the community about black 
businesses in general, um, because that's very important. It's important uh, to also get rid of that that stigma so they get used to seeing professionally run, well-run Black businesses. So I'll stop there. I think those are the three um, important key areas uh, that we support and help sustain Black businesses in our Thank you, Shahiwa. Um, Eric. Bring myself off you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Anne Marie, again for having all of us um, as we all advocate for opportunities for Black business um, each and every day. The Miami Dade Chamber has been around since 1974. It was formed because of the lack of opportunity. Um, and, you know, I, I want to first of all salute my good friend Rick Beasley as the chairman of the Greater Miami Chamber. And, and I say that. Because again, as the, the Miami Dade Chamber was formed in 1974, it was because of the lack of opportunities and inclusion. And there were several businessmen and women that came together and formed the chamber. And when you talk about opportunities in 1974, and here we are in 2021, where we still have disparities, where in Miami Dade County, black businesses receive less than 2% of county contracts. Same thing was happening with Miami Dade County Public Schools. Uh, but that has changed somewhat because the Dade County um, Public Schools with Superintendent Cavallo and uh, board member Dorothy Mendengal and Steve Gallant have put policy in place that directs and creates opportunities for black business. Awesome. Did you freeze, Eric, or are you still there? No, I'm. I'm, I'm oh, okay. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it was like such an abrupt stop. I was, I was yeah, just keeping it tight. I was just keeping it tight. Okay. Um, Rick. <laughs> well, Anne Marie, it is so good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, I'm glad that you're doing well to uh, the other panelists, you know, which uh, I've known, Shahiwa and Eric. And then had an opportunity to meet, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Smith. So it's fantastic. Um, so let me share with everyone. Uh, you know, I'm I, my my day job is the CEO of the Career Source South Florida. That's that's the, the job that pays the bills. Uh, my volunteer job is chairman of the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, which is uh, the large chamber here, 114 years uh, of service to Miami Dade uh, County. Um, you know, in terms of how we help black business, I can tell you that if it wasn't for our partnership with Miami Day Chamber and Eric Knowles, uh, we wouldn't have been able to launch uh, GMCC Unites, which is a program that we launched uh, to help black businesses due to um, the needs uh, that arose, but specifically to address issues that came out of the, the George Floyd uh, incident last year. Uh, and I will share with you that we've had a number of conversations with Eric and how we, you know, the chambers can partner. More importantly, how we can get our black businesses engaged of opportunities, not only uh, within uh, the county uh, and other municipalities, the school district, but more importantly, uh, other um, opportunities with big corporations that are here in Dade County. So our goal is how we mentor them uh, how we're able to connect them, uh, how we're able to provide technical assistance. And so um, uh, our chamber is really looking at ways of how we help grow uh, small business. And small business also means black businesses. And so uh, the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce has been around. Uh, and then unfortunately, I will share with uh, Eric, you know, Eric has shared with you all. We've been around 114 years. We've only had two black chairmen. Uh, and I'm the second, um, and, and Eric makes a joke that, you know, I still pass as uh, uh, Latino, so, you know, they might've made a mistake. Uh, so he, well, I see you over there. <laughs> and, and, and Marie, I know you're thinking this, so I'm just gonna say it out there, so let it go, let it go. But uh, while here, we are gonna emphasize uh, to ensure that we have greater inclusive, inclusivity of not only back black businesses, but women owned businesses um, so that we can grow our community. Because if we do not have a strong black business community, then the black community also uh, dies. And so we as a Greater Miami Chamber have a vested interest in ensuring that every aspect of our community uh, is thriving. And so uh, we're glad to be here this afternoon. 
Awesome. Thank you. Grassford? Uh, first of all, thank you, Anne-Marie. Uh, you've become synonymous for putting on great events. So when you invite me to some place, I'm, I'm showing up. I'm honored to really be on this esteemed panel and listening to um, what the other leaders are doing for their respective groups, because in many ways, we're all trying to achieve the same goal. And in fact, we're working together. Uh, I know that Shaliwa and Eric have both uh, been involved meaningfully with the Black Chamber. And I'm looking forward, Rick, uh, to being able to uh, have you join us as well and share uh, with us your expertise. Uh, we start with, I want to start with Black Chamber's mission. I want to read it to you briefly. It's to advance the economic interests of our members through advocacy, edu education, information sharing, and resource brokering to maximize their successes. So we are guided in every way by our mission. Uh, and first for advocacy, I know that was mentioned before, and Shahiba pointed out that the goal is equity. One of the things that we try to do as a Black Chamber is to uh, have a seat at the table. So we try to make sure that our board members are in fact placed on, in the right areas so that we're in the room when decisions are being made. But even if we're not, we're trying to establish those kind of relationships so that we can advocate uh, to achieve equity. That's really what the ultimate goal is, to have a fair shot uh, at, at, uh, at being successful. Uh, I know others talked about technical assistance. You know, we pride ourselves as a Black Chamber on providing uh, great technical assistance. We, we have an Ask an Expert series that we do regularly. Uh, during the pandemic, we innovated a program called Wednesday Wisdoms, Wednesday Wisdom, which is all done virtually. And we bring in experts like Shaiwa and Eric, talk about different uh, areas that they have um, they can offer to our members. I mean, everything from accounting, IT, uh, and by the way, mental health, because that's something a lot of us uh, suffer from uh, during the pandemic. And, and networking opportunities uh, that we also provide. So I can go on and on, but I'll stop there for now. We are definitely laser focused on how we can uplift the Black business community, because as Rick said, when that the black business community is thriving. The overall uh, black community thrives. And by the way, the larger community thrives as well. So, it, you know, we're all in the same boat. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Grassford. So, you know, as we're looking at the state of black businesses, you know, from each of your vantage point and based on your membership and, of course, the part of the region that you're based in, um, can you talk about, in your opinion, what is the state of Black businesses? What are some of the trends that you're seeing, um, especially since the pandemic? Um, and, and how does it compare um, statewide as well as nationally? And so, um, Shahiwa, we'll start with you again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, I'd say the state of Black business is a bit in flux. I mean, I will tell you this. I had um, members last year uh, as the pandemic heated up and things began to shut down that were able to kind of easily pivot and navigate through it um, because they had um, businesses that were you know, predisposed to pivoting. And so they were able to do fairly well. But honestly, um, the vast majority of our members struggled through it. You know, our restaurants, um, you know, anyone that had, you know, retail establishments, um, even, you know, some consultants because people didn't want to come out, you know, people weren't really um, doing the virtual thing that was all new. So there was a, a struggle. Um, our chamber, in conjunction with the grant, put out a survey that we launched in August during National Black Business Month and ended in September. And we had about 650 respondents to that survey. Black businesses discussing, you know, um, their particular experience. And the vast majority talked about the fact that they were forced to shut down. They did suffer loss. They had to um, let go of employees. Uh, and so there was a struggle. Um, and uh, quite frankly, there was a panic there. We got the panic calls um, of people wondering, you know, first it was the 
PPP wave, but then you got the PPP, and then that kind of um, ran down. It was like, where's the next um, source of funding because we're not fully open and um, the recovery has been slow. And so here we are in 2021, kind of getting started again. And I will say, um, I've seen the resolve in the eyes of my members and in our call saying that they're determined to survive, they're determined to find ways to um, adjust strategies to make sure that their businesses are able to uh, survive, but it has been very difficult. I'm not going to say that we're out of the woods yet. Um, you know, the recovery has been slow for the vast majority of our businesses. And so they're, they're hanging on, they're finding ways to cut costs. Um, um, for some of our uh, restaurants and event planners and things of that nature, things are starting to pick back up. But as we know, we kind of have a rise in the Delta <laughs> variant. So there's some fear there. Um, I'm hearing the fear and getting the calls that, you know, um, we may be shutting down again. I don't know what this looks like for my business. Um, I have the uh, privilege of communicating with um, through the um, pandemic and continually with other chambers um, in, you know, Maryland, uh, uh, New Jersey, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, South and North Carolina, and you're hearing the same things. We're all talking about the same things, these black chambers, that um, our members initially didn't get PPP, um, then some were able to get it, and then now the recovery is just um, pretty slow, um, although our businesses are able to hang on. But I think the point is, I'll close with this, the point is uh, we really need the economy to come back um, where people fully feel comfortable going out because it's still not easy. Things are still very tight economically for us. Thank you, um, Eric. What What about you? What are you? What is the state, and what are you? What are the trends that you're seeing? I mean, I mean, Shahiwa pretty much put it in a nutshell. I mean, we're all pretty much uh, experiencing the same thing, as she said here in South Florida. You know, the one thing we had here in South Florida, Florida period, that a lot of the rest of the country didn't have is our weather. So those who were able to pivot, as she said, uh, those restaurants, uh, not that we had that many restaurants that had the outside capability of dining 100%, uh, you know, because restaurants were cut to 50%. So we had restaurants that were able to do that. We had businesses that were in the right business at the right time when it, when you think about the pandemic. Um, one of our members, Able Business Services, he does uh, cleaning, he even makes his own chemicals. So those type of businesses, cleaning businesses have thrived. I mean, they've tripled and quadrupled their business. And so those type of business that were in service that met the needs of the pandemic, those businesses, another uh, gentleman, who uh, makes toast vodka, guess what he was making? He stopped making vodka and he made, uh, 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 yeah, sanitizer. hand, sanitizer, sanitizer. hand sanitizer. sanitizers. So it was those type of things when you say what's happening, you have those businesses who are thriving and obviously those who have gone out of business and those who are trying to hold on. So um, what, and, and I, you know, I have to thank Rick uh, because of Career Source South Florida, we have been providing technical assistance each and every day to our members. Um, we, when the pandemic hit, we were on every day, like right now, Zooming, basically, and providing information how to access the PPP, how to access EIDL, how to access the uh, Florida emergency money. A lot of people, and you all have heard this saying, it's better to have it than not need it, than to need it and not have it. Because there were some businesses that said, well, I don't want to go after the EID. I don't want to go after the PPP. I don't really don't need it. But then again, we don't know. We didn't know where we were going to be when this started to where we are now. And as he was said, you know, with this variant kicking up, you know, we as chambers, we're out here fighting to help businesses stay open. And then when you're hearing all this, and we were just as even before, we were talking about events, trying to go back to doing in-person events. And we're kind of, we're backtracking, backpedaling, saying, you know, are we going to do it? But at the same time, we got to keep business going. So it's this, how, how do you, you know, how do you uh, manage this process? So we're in a flux ourselves as a chamber. 
Wow. Um, so many great points. Um, Rick, anything you want to add or? Yes. Uh, first of all, you know, I was going to get on Eric because I was like to say, Eric, man, you all were working your butts off. You, you got to talk about what you were doing. And so, uh, and Eric is right. Um, you know, Career Source South Florida, I'm going to put on the one hat and I'm going to change it back to the chamber. Uh, as a CEO of Career Source, our, our role there was how we can help uh, our businesses grow. They're our only customer. And so we saw a way of working with the Eric Knowles, Miami Day Chamber, the Greater Miami Chamber, the Beacon Council, uh, Camelco, and others, because we know without the chambers, our companies will fail. Eric and his crew, uh, the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, the crew, Beacon Council, Chemical, they did a fantastic job of assisting companies in repivoting and, and how they are able to stay open. Now, there's some companies that weren't able to survive, but there were a number of companies that did. Uh, they pivoted, they saw ways of being able to reinvent themselves. And I think this is where the strength of the chambers uh, of them having to pivot them seeing ways of uh, themselves of looking at how they provide technical assistance, um, having to provide different events, uh, even like uh, in my, uh, you know, legacy media, you all are doing things differently to help provide information uh, to the community, uh, to the business community and, and being able to, again, repivot uh, in a way so they can survive. So Great Miami Chamber of Commerce, we, not only did we launch GMCC uh, Unites, which is focused on helping Black businesses uh, get connected with members of the Greater Miami Chamber, we also launched uh, GMCC Cares, which again provided technical assistance uh, to the loans, uh, getting access to other um, resources to help those companies grow. I will share with you, Miami Dade Chamber has been doing some fantastic work. They are trying to help small businesses grow. Uh, they just had an event with the um, the women's council. Sorry, Eric, I'm gonna I'm gonna pub you up. Uh, but they are doing uh, events so that it on, it helps our black companies, and so that's important. Uh, again, the Greater Miami Chamber, we we partner with Miami Dade, but our role here is how we help small businesses. Uh, there's an event that we're gonna be launching here. Alfred and I are trying to finalize a couple items. Again, kind of a a, a business roundtable meeting with black leaders on how we are to engage, how we're supposed to uh, provide the access and other resources. And so you'll have that and the real will make sure that you have that information to share with our, our folks here. But our chambers uh, are the, the vehicle to help our black businesses grow and to get connected. And so for those who are listening to us, if you're not a member uh, of, the, of a chamber, please join. Um, as Career Source South Florida, we are a member of not only Miami Day Chamber, but also the Greater Miami Chamber. Our role there is to assist the businesses. But if you're not a member, please join either. Uh, let me make sure I get it right because I don't. I have um, um, the Miami Day Chamber, I have the Broward uh, Black Chamber of Commerce, and I think I have the Palm Beach Black Chamber of Commerce. If you're not a member of those, join. And of course, I want you to join the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce. But again, our emphasis on how we help Black business, you need to become a member of these chambers. Absolutely. Grassford, would you like to add anything? Thank you, Mr. Beasley. I think I'm going to have to get a snippet of that to put on our website, a join now uh, feature uh, that you did a great job with that. Um, I'm reminded uh, during the pandemic of a cliche that goes something like this. Uh, when, when America has a cold, black America has pneumonia. And so during the pandemic, you know, for the businesses that were already black businesses already hanging on by a thread, uh, they couldn't withstand what took place. Uh, but as been said before by Eric, you know, actually all of us have said it one way or another, the businesses that were able to innovate, pivot, certainly are the ones that have been able to thrive during this environment. I, I think of one of our members who was a chef that went from putting on all these uh, big events to now catering box lunches for, for big companies. Uh, so that was a way that he innovated to get his product out there, but knowing that there weren't going to be these gatherings that were taking place uh, earlier. 
So, you know, with the chamber, one of the things that we we tried to identify was what made some of the folks unable to access PPP funding. A part of it was sometimes not having some of the basic things that they needed to have in place, but also it was not even having banking relationships. You know, someone that they can call up to, to say, can you help me with this? So when we identified those issues, uh, we immediately, again, I mentioned the Wednesday Wisdom platform, but that's really what was birthed because of the need to educate our members and also to partner with banks. Uh, one of our, actually we have several board members who are senior banking um, officials. So we, we, we've been trying to make sure we bridge that gap. So as a chamber, we're just there to, to assist the best way we can, but we understand that the pandemic afflicted many of us and, and we're not gonna be immune from that. We're just trying to be better prepared as the, the, the other variants come around or whatever other type of pandemic or, or, or other strife, strife that may, may come about. Thank and Marie, if I may, you know, the one thing that Rick just said, um, you know, join the chamber and Shahiwa knows, Grassford knows, you know, a lot of people, they say, well, why should I join the chamber? What am I going to get out of it? And as, as the saying goes, uh, you got to put something in to get something out. Um, when you join a chamber, you know, you got to become a part of a committee. I say most uh, chambers are driven by committees. Uh, whether it's your membership committee or whether it's your international trade committee, whether it's your IT committee, uh, your education committee, that is what propels and moves chambers forward. So those of you who, you know, you said, well, I, I, I was a part of a chamber before. I didn't get anything out of it. Well, guess what? You probably didn't put anything into it. It's like going to a gym. At the end of the year, we all have these uh, New Year's resolutions. I'm going to join a gym go to the gym for uh, a month and then you don't go anymore. So you just spent that money and you didn't get anything out of it. So get engaged. I'm going to follow up on that. You know, I can't leave that hanging, Eric. <laughs> I, I have to say this because I was reading the next question about what are the trends that we saw with black owned businesses since the pandemic. And I was going to put a little twist on that and say, I saw black businesses coming home, coming home to their black chambers. And, you know, we do get that, you know, question, Eric, oh, why would I, why should I join? And I think the pandemic has taught black business owners what those benefits are, because as Rick and Grassford and Eric have, have mentioned, we had to pivot ourselves and offer sessions on PPP. We had to offer sessions on compliance so that you could get your loan forgiven. We had to do all that pivoting. We, we were the ones pumping out that information. Um, I literally walked streets in our in Sistrunk area and Sunrise and walked to black businesses telling them about city grants that weren't um, properly publicized, that businesses did not know about. Our chambers were are the grassroots workers that are making sure that our black businesses are informed and know what's going on. We feel that information gap as well as a technical assistance uh, gap as well. So I saw that trend in a lot of black business owners calling, oh, I want to be a member. I want to be a member um, coming home because all of a sudden when there was a crisis, they saw the value. But there's a value year after year if you do what Eric just said. You get involved, become involved in the committee, be active. And I tell people, uh, you know, if there's something that you don't see us doing, communicate that. Mm -hmm. Don't just drop off and, oh, you know, they're not doing anything. No, communicate that. We're here for you. We're, we're here to make sure that you get the programming and the support that you need. And that's exactly what we did uh, during the pandemic. So that was the biggest trend I saw. I saw black businesses coming home to their black chambers. They thought there was something, I guess, flashier and nicer at the other chambers. And I'm not saying that the other chambers don't, you know, offer things you should, if you, you're a business owner, you should belong to multiple chambers. I mean, that, that should be a, a business plan and decision. I'm not just, a, I don't just run a chamber. I also have a business and I'm a member of multiple chambers. So that should be in your budget, but don't think there's something flashier and nicer at the larger chamber that your black chambers don't have. We have it and we give and we give a little bit more because we have that passion and dedication to our black businesses. And that's what I saw 
um, with these three chambers as we met through the summer, last summer, trying to figure out how we could help our Black business members. Um, uh, I mean, last then she I mean, had to jump in again. Hold come on, Rick. On, get, get, Hold, on, Rick. On. Hold on, Rick. And so, you know, as you said, you know, those other chambers, may, they, they have what they have, but we need something more. You know, that chamber, that greater, and, and no disparagement, because Alfred is a great friend of mine. And even when I was with the Dolphins, they were part of many different chambers. But they're not concerned about disparity issues that we are. They're not fighting for this, uh, for equalizing the opportunities that, that we have to fight for. So as, as Shahiwa said, yeah, we probably grew uh, exponentially um, because of people coming back to the chamber and, and getting the information that we were providing. So Rick, I'm gonna shut up, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, you know, Eric, I think you're right on. Uh, so let me say this, that, you know, as becoming chair, even in the, um, uh, in the role as vice chair and then uh, chair elect, everybody, you know, you know, all my friends, colleagues, what are you going to do for the black businesses? And my first comment was, uh, have you joined? Because I can be there and can be one voice. But if you're not engaged in the chamber, then I can't help. I can't push an agenda item and not have support. And I think, Eric, you hit it right on the head in terms of joining the chamber, whether it's the, the Greater Miami Chamber, the Alliance, you know, the, the chambers that, uh, let me just say, the, the chambers that re represent everybody, white, Hispanic, uh, and not specifically for the black businesses, but we don't have enough black uh, businesses joining the Greater Miami Chamber. We need that. Why? Because you need the connectivity as well as you can get for the chicanity at the, our black chambers. However, we still need to know how to partner with others outside of our own communities. And that's where it also happens. The other piece is that you need, just like it was mentioned, if a chamber is not representing um, your best interest, you need to put it out there. You need to engage the chamber so that it can represent um, your interests. And so having one person um, being there to represent Again, folks, I can't represent every aspect of the black community because we, we are a very diverse black community. And so what I need those from the Haitian community, those from uh, from uh, black uh, black Latinos to, to, you know, their businesses, those of African descent, every component to be a part of the chamber and engage, whether you're on the finance committee, um, workforce committee, the education committee, whether it's um, trade. We need every black business to be a part of because again, it's a, it's a way of engaging, but also being able to share some of that information black to your own respective chambers. And join as many chambers that will represent your best interests, okay? And, and so we need to ensure that our businesses are engaged uh, and to help build, because for me, committees build a stronger chamber. Committees help build a stronger community. And if you're not engaged, then we're not going to get access. You can't advocate in terms of having a business development fund uh, created by your respective municipality or government if you're not engaged. You can't bring those ideas uh, to the chamber or to other organizations or elected officials to help push your interests. And so we need to understand the importance of chambers, but also the importance of black chambers, what it represents for your respective community. Again, I want you to join the Greater Miami Chamber because I need you to be a voice um in those meetings because i can't be in all those meetings myself you know I, I think those are such great points about you know joining being engaged um joining multiple chambers so that way you're able to really connect your business and create awareness about your business and your services but also being involved um i think the you know, for, for me as a business owner, one of the greatest testimonies I have in growing my business was through my volunteer work and my um, committees that I was a part of. I was one of the ones who helped restart the Palm Beach County Black Chamber many moons ago. Um, but it was through that work that people saw me. And when I, you know, had a business then said, OK, well, if you're doing all this for free, <laughs> Let me see how, you know, I, I can trust you with my product or service or brand as well. So, you know, um, being a member has its benefits, being engaged has its benefits. 
Um, it's a great way to build relationships. It's a great way to network. It's a great way to show your skills and your expertise as well, and a great way to give back. So um, I completely agree with uh, what each of you have said. Now, one of you talked about, each of you mentioned something that was so critical and it was pivoting um, or um, adjusting uh, to you know this new environment that we're in. And so I, I want to talk about as you, uh, opportunities for businesses when it comes to expansion and growth. Um, because I think sometimes as business owners, we're, we're, we're stuck on what it is that we do best and do well and what we've always done um, and how we've always done it, but um, don't necessarily always seek out the new opportunities for growth and expansion. And as an economic development organization, which you are, um, you're just as important and critical as the Beacon Council or the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance or the Business Development Board who um, serve as economic development industries for you know, the respective counties. Um, and they're always looking at industries, whether it's tourism, finance, um, all these different areas, aerospace and Palm Beach and biotech and biohealth and science and all these different things. Where do you see some of the greatest opportunities for um, businesses, particularly black owned businesses to look at for growth and expansion? And whoever wants to start. <laughs> Let me, you know, Eric, Eric knows where I'm about to go with this. Um, so I see a lot of potential for us uh, where there's a, cause there's a comment what chambers can do. This is where the chambers can partner together uh, to develop um, relationships with our research institutions, uh, to look at how we can commercialize the patents of those research institutions. We, we, we missed the boat. So this is why we do need a, a diversity in terms of the, the types of chambers where we have um, in, in Miami-Dade County, we're gonna have the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce as well as Miami-Dade, where we can talk to the FIUs and the University of Miami Patent Office to look at how we can strategize on commercializing those patents, looking at ways of advocating to county government, of uh, providing funding to be able to commercialize those patents. Well, so what does that mean? So by being connected, we one can partner uh, some of our members together to be able to uh, commercialize those patents. Also, it allows us to have a discussion on where those companies can be developed. We have Ponciana Park that Eric and those guys have been pushing that for years. And so, we can now direct towards our economic development arms where we want. Again, we have to make chambers strong by our voice, our commitment and our participation of what we can do and build. There's potential growth, but sometimes we, we miss out on, because uh, we got to run our business. We, you know, folks got to run their business. And so I think because of COVID, it has had us look at ways of how we provide information and meetings. So you, I don't have to come to you now. I can set up a quick 30 minute meeting or an hour meeting and we can get some things done to discuss it. But we have an opportunity to partner together and look at ways of, uh, of future opportunities. And then we, we, for me, it is always about what the research institutions are doing, our education partners are doing. We, we miss the boat because there are patents there. And so we, we, we're always the last to get in on something when we can be the first to be in on something to build and have it built in our community to have high growth occupations, high growth jobs for our community. So we we, we have an opportunity. And I know have Eric has done it with the Alliance and everything else. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. Now I wanted to just build on what you just said. Um, and Anne-Marie, at the event that you hosted recently for the city of West Palm Beach, the speaker and McNeil made the comment to the audience that we all need to be experts in our respective industries. That's a part of being a good business person, to be an expert in industry. So I, I'm, I'm a law firm partner. I must be an expert in my client's industry. You have to be aware of what's going on. So for example, this Biden infrastructure plan that, that's being talked about, uh, that's going to be billions and billions of dollars being infused into communities. I guarantee you that uh, a lot of the a lot of big businesses are are sitting around strategizing and planning for how they're going to attack those opportunities. What we hear all too often is we didn't know that that was posted. 
some opportunity that was out there to build this, to do this, or to do that. That's partly where we as a chamber come in. We want to make sure that we provide that information and give you ample opportunities to apply. But the onus is on you to, to, to be tracking your industry and to think about if, if, if construction is thriving, that means they're going to be professional services that will also be thriving. Uh, that could impact the, the food industry. And there's so many different uh, uh, outgrowths of all of these opportunities that are coming down. But, but what I see often, the businesses that do well are the ones that are paying attention to what's going on, showing up to the meetings, uh, you know, reading the Wall Street Journal or, or whatever it is in your, in your particular area to make sure that you're, you're familiar with what's going on and you're there and prepared to attack it the way that you need to. The, the other thing that uh, Rick didn't mention, and then he's been a big part of, you know, you talk about trends and where we're going, you know, uh, and, and all of us have experienced this, you know, we push for our high school graduates to go to college. Everybody isn't going to go to college. I mean, that's just a given. And the things that Rick has been doing with Career Source, they just started this automotive program in which uh, they partnered with Miami-Dade College and getting a certification uh, in auto repair, working with Brayman and um, Warren Henry Motors. And th these young men and women are coming out making sixty dollars to $100,000 a year. But my point in saying that is there's also that opportunity that those young men and women can, can become entrepreneurs and build their own shops, uh, whether you are into um, uh, uh, AC repair, learning that business, becoming your, starting your own business, plumbing, electrical. So those are the things that we have to do also, teach our young folks how to be self-sufficient. I want to just jump in real quick, Emory, and mention the fact that, you know, we have industries that are budding in the state of Florida. And I know when we first started, um, I first launched a the chamber, there was this new industry coming to Florida, which I don't feel that... Um, we have enough black representation. I know there's been a lot of fighting and lobbying to get uh, to be, for it to be more inclusive. But, you know, this cannabis industry is huge in, you know, Colorado and California. And, you know, it's predicted to be, you know, a multi-billion dollar industry here in Florida. And, you know, that's something, you know, we've we've partnered with a few minorities for, you know, medical marijuana and done. They had a U.S. cannabis um, expo and conference and we kind of hosted something um, in Broward for that conference, which was in Miami, to try to, you know, expose our uh, members to that as well. Um, you know, we may not necessarily be the experts in that particular field, but we want to introduce you and allow you to make those connections to people um, who are. And because it's budding and we know it's going to make money, and of course we know the history of who's been um, incarcerated uh, when it was illegal, I think that makes it even more important. I also mentioned, um, you know, some of the named um, focus that um, the counties or the state have, um, and there's money there for people who want to get into, you know, manufacturing and those types of industries and some of the ones that you've listed, Emory. So outside of, you know, you saying, oh, I kind of have a talent, you know, I encourage people to say, okay, fine, we understand that, but do some research on what um, local governments and the state governments are looking into and see if that's something that you can actually um, get into. Um, I see that comment about solar. We have a, a turn to turn to solar company in um, the chamber that does that, but that's also a budding industry. So you want to make sure that, you know, it's not simply, oh, well, I can cook. So let me just, you know, you know, I can be a chef or something like that. If you have an interest in business in general and don't really have um, an idea, you can do this research and find out um, how you can get involved in these other industries. I'd also say that tourism, I think, is something that um, as black businesses, we we need to take advantage of. And and um, as a chamber, we're looking more into that and have been trying to partner more with our CVB and open up opportunities there. We have a very diverse business community. Our CVB should be um, promoting black businesses. 
um, not just black faces and commercials. Um, our business should be um, pivoting so that tourists can um, come into their restaurants, use their florist shops, et cetera. Uh, you know, we should be actively engaged in that industry. And I just don't, I don't see that. I think there's an opportunity um, that we're exploring with our, our CVB to educate our community on how you enter that industry, own your own jet ski shop. You know, there are other things you can do to take advantage of, um, even if it's a second business that you set up, to take advantage of these um, additional uh, dollars uh, that are there. So that's something that we're um, really looking into. And lastly, I may, I'll, I'll kind of piggyback off of Rick with the patent. Um, I, I, I attended an alliance meeting and heard um, a doctor from a FIU speaking, and I immediately invited him to our meetings. And we've done three different things with him because of the power of whether you buy a patent and then commercialize it, or you work with um, these federal labs around the nation. And I was blown away. I was like, what black people know about this? <laughs> other people know about this. And so we've been pushing that and did a tech session and some other um, sessions on patents um, because, and the history of patents in our community to, to, so people understand this is not something that we've never done. We have black people utilizing patents to create wealth. Um, but also adding, finding ways to add um, some type of technology or patent to your current business to now you have a product instead of just a service so that you can expand your offering and expand your revenue. So that's something that we've been, we have been active in and we, we're getting active in some of the other areas to make sure our black businesses uh, know about these different opportunities. And if, if and Marie, can... Let me also add that uh, not only with uh, connectivity to to our research institutions uh, to commercialize the patents. I think we, we we have failed, and I would love to encourage all you know, particularly our black chambers, uh, to really look at uh, creating opportunity funds uh, to target uh, opportunity zones that will can help grow uh, black businesses uh, throughout um, our, the southern region. Dade County alone. Uh, the state of Florida has 412 opportunity zones that have been designated by the governor, okay, the, the previous governor. And there were some areas that, quite frankly, should have been designated as an opportunity zone, like Opalaka, which was not. The airport was, the city itself was not. We, we, you know, so we're not going to debate that. However, it does present an opportunity where chambers can lead initiatives to bring in angel investors uh, to take a look at how we can grow our black community and how we can grow black businesses by utilizing opportunity funds uh, in those areas that have been designated as an opportunity zone. There are 67 in Dade County alone, 67. In my workforce region of 68, there's one in Marathon, but in Dade County, we have 67. And so I think we also need to take uh, an advantage of being able to bridge uh, our black businesses, uh, see how we can get them and provide technical assistance to partner together to be able to create um, new businesses, different businesses, or grow uh, in opportunity zones where we can use those funds to help uh, develop our respective communities. And so that was just another nugget I just wanted to throw out there. Also, Rick, um, you know, Miami, Dade County, South Florida is becoming a, a major tech hub. And so how do we push the envelope to make sure that we as a black community are engaged with that? But also when you talk about the opportunity zones, we know we have these CRAs. How do we get our folks to understand what a CRA is, what it does for our community, and how can we get engaged with uh, doing business with the CRA? So and the, and the other part of this, and, you know, Shahiwa and I, we have been in meetings together. We've been in meetings uh, and when she talks about tourism. The one thing I will say is that the Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau has been doing a outstanding job with Connie Kennard, who is the VP of, uh, of um, uh, gosh, um, trying to remember the, her actual title. But anyway, um, yeah, multicultural, multicultural. Mul multicultural uh, tourism. And I know I've sat in classes and, with the uh, tourism board that they have provided to our business community. The one thing that we have to do better is understand what we're good at. You know, a lot of us want to go into business, but we're not necessarily good at that. I say a lot of us fell uh, fell short 
when the, when the pandemic hit, because as I said, we didn't have the back of our house together. You know, it's one thing to know how to cook. It's one thing to know how to uh, be a, a landscaper or whatever that particular job is. But if you don't have a lawyer, you don't have an accountant, you don't have a CPA, we have to do, go do better at understanding business and running our business and, and partner with others. You know, it's one thing to want to start a business. Have you talked to someone who runs a, or have been successful at that particular business that you want to start? Wow, all such great points. And I'm gonna have to throw a shameless plug in here because we have the National Black Economic Conference coming up. Um, the date has moved to August 27th, which is a Friday. And we're gonna be discussing, we have so many dynamic speakers that's gonna be talking about a lot of these opportunities we discussed here from the $91 billion cannabis industry and how to tap in to the infrastructure um, bill and various infrastructure projects. We have the USDOT um, director that will be there. Um, we're gonna be talking about real estate. We're gonna be talking about cryptocurrency as well as solar energy. Um, and so many other businesses and industries that people um, that are listening, if you're listening, should be involved in. And you can learn more. We, we're partners with, if we're not partners with you on this call, I know we are with Palm Beach County. Um, uh, we've partnered with you before and we want you to partner with us again. MIA Media is a sponsor. Um, but, you know, nationalblackeconomicconference.com, you can register um, August 27th. It is virtual. So you can attend from anywhere in the country. Um, and this is the information that we're going to be sharing about these opportunities and how you can get involved and, and, and expand and grow your business. And each person here has just so dropped so much information. And I think we can have a whole panel, which I'm going to talk to you guys offline about that at the conference <laughs> about the importance of chambers and being involved, because I don't think um, mem uh, uh, people are really understanding the importance. We had a question about, you know, why join a chamber, um, but you all have addressed that so eloquently here. And I know that there's so much more that we can talk about, um, about joining a chamber. So one of our closing questions, um, I'm going to try to wrap them all into one, um, because, and I, I think we've, we're doing a better job of, of supporting each other. August is National Black Business Month. Um, there are 31 days, 31 ways to support a black owned business. If you need a list of, of how to uh, what to do each day and what type of business you should think about, you can go to blackbusinessloop.com and you'll see that list right there on the website for you to look at those 31 ways that you can support a black owned business. So number one, um, this is going to be a three part question. Why is National Black Business Month so important um, in your opinion? How can we encourage uh, black business owners to support each other and buy black from each other as well as others that may be non-black to buy black um, and why that's important. And lastly, what initiative or event or um, uh, activity do you have coming up um, for the month of August that you want to share with um, our audience? So we'll start with Shahiba. All right. Thank you for the question. Um, you know, National Black Business Month is, I think, a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate what is a Black business excellence. I feel that it provides, um, I, I'm a hist I love looking back in history, and I think when you look back at what our um, ancestors were able to do not too long, not even too long ago, in the 40s and 50s, um, and, you know, the early 19th century, with the little that they had, but they were able to, to create businesses, create jobs, support their families, and push forward toward the American dream. And so I love um, to look back on that. And I think this month is a very special time to be able to do that, to celebrate that grit that we have, that we survive despite despite what we have had to um, endure. And so I think that's very important. I think it's also important for the greater community to understand that we have um, Black businesses that are out here doing it, contributing to the community, creating jobs, and that are um, impactful. Uh, so that's why I, I love this month, especially. Um, the next part is, I think, we're, uh, the initiatives or things that we're, we're doing this month um, to support 
Black businesses. Well, we like to showcase um, Black businesses and our members during this month. So we've already had a pop up at um, a beauty supply shop that was, you know, struggling. So we were able to get some business in there. Um, we did that last Saturday. We have a national Black business reception coming up on August 17th at 6 p.m. And we'll be doing that in a historic Black neighborhood, the Sistrunk neighborhood. Our speaker will be Sean uh, Wordlow from um, the largest minority and women owned um, bonding and financial financing company. They'll be here to um, pretty much have Black business excellence on display, let people know that, yes, we are here. And um, we'll also have a, um, a Black uh, food tour. We're going to be featuring four different restaurants. Um, so that'll be on um, Saturday, August the 21st. Um, we'll be doing that. And then we'll be closing out the month at a restaurant with a wine tasting at Swirl Wine Bistro for people to come out and kind of enjoy um, and close out the festivities for the month with us. And once again, to support a restaurant, one of those businesses that were uh, you know, struggling during the pandemic. So that's, that's what we're doing for uh, National Black Business Month here in Broward. Awesome. I'm so excited. And please, uh, Shahiwa, post your event at blackbusinessloop.com, as well as encourage your businesses to list their business for free there. Um, Eric, what do you guys have coming up? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to, before I go there, it's one thing I, I want to say. Um, in the process of going through the death of George Floyd and, and the pandemic, there were a lot of corporate America businesses that pledged billions of dollars to our community. And one thing that we have to do is hold their feet to the fire. Um, we, Grassford, Rick, Shahiwa, you know, we've been talking about this in our other meetings, Shahiwa, and it's something we really need to, to focus on. But in terms of, uh, Black Business Month, it's important, uh, as Shahiwa said, when you think about our communities, our communities were strong when we had Black businesses. And we have to get back to that and understand that we need to support Black business uh, from the from our, our dentists. You know, my dentist, uh, he retired, but my, my, um, my, uh, um, my person that cleans, what do they call them? Uh, hygienist. My hygienist is black, so I continue to go there because of the business was sold. It's no longer black, but my hygienist is black. Well, we got to support black business and, and promoting black business is important. Uh, what we're doing, we're doing basically pop ups where I'll drop into one of our businesses and do a Facebook Live. Uh, we did uh, Mr. William Barry uh, 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 last week and we'll be doing others. We're just surprising them. It's a surprise. We're, we haven't uh, scheduled anyone. Uh, but that's what we'll do throughout the month. At the end of the month, we started this last month, the last Friday of every month, we will be going to a restaurant. Uh, we're working on which restaurant uh, we'll be going to this month. So listen out for that. Awesome. Rick? Well, let me first address the one question of why, uh, you know, Black National uh, um, National Black uh, Month, Black Month, Business Month. First of all, it is to celebrate, I think Shahiwa hit it right on the head, to celebrate Black businesses. But I also feel it's a way to provide exposure uh, to our future entrepreneurs. So they have, have an understanding, one of our history. Uh, oftentimes folks think that we just created businesses and in response to, and again, I am a product of Black Wall Street, okay? My great grandparents had three grocery stores in Black Wall Street. So again, being an entrepreneur has always grown within our family. And so we need to be aware of the history, but also the future and potential uh, uh, businesses that we can that we can inspire. So recognizing and really honoring this month is really recognizing the commitment and support, but it also means it supports our community. Because they, you know, if you have a black business, you typically hire someone of, who's black. So it creates uh, employment opportunities and we miss the boat on that, okay? And so uh, anything that we can do, uh, one, as a chamber, because I'm going to encourage the Greater Miami Chamber to make sure that we have this as part of a, a an annual recognition so that we don't miss the boat. We sometimes forget. And so it allows us to have others to partner together. 
and bring about uh, a, a stronger community because that's what black businesses do. It brings about a stronger community. And so what do we plan on doing as a chamber? Well, I've been actually ironically working uh, uh, with Susan, um, uh, Susan's gonna kill me. She, and, and this is a little inside joke. So if she's listening to this inside joke, Susan. Um, but I've been working with Susan to be able to create a uh, kind of a, a black business roundtable uh, with the Greater Miami Chamber of, uh, of Commerce, so that we have a discussion. And actually, some of the items that we uh, we discussed here uh, that I want to to bring about one is the um, uh, the banking relationships and maybe inviting some of the banks there. So. Again, uh, it is important that we all join um, black chambers, but we also wanna make sure that we're joining other chambers, uh, the, the, the Alliance in Broward, and of course the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce. You, they have a fantastic, I, I know their chairman, he's fantastic. He's a great guy. I'm talking about me guys, you're supposed, you're supposed to be laughing at this point in time. Uh, <laughs> but I do want us to focus on how we can build better relationships with our black chambers. Uh, I am though, you know, of color. And so I wanna make sure that we have a relationship to help not only our black businesses grow, but also our chambers to grow. And it takes all of us to build and to work together to build a better community. So, you know, Anne Maria, thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. I've been enjoying it, fantastic folks on there. And we're gonna get uh, uh, Mr. Smith to come down to uh, help us on that round table. I want him to be, to, to attend that round table. So when we have it, we'll reach out to you. Absolutely. And, and Grassford, what about you? What's your take? Um, National Black Business Month. Uh, what does the chamber have coming up? I know you uh, the chamber's partnered with me on a few events this month um, as well. So Palm Beach County, what are we doing? <laughs> well, Anne Marie, you know you're right with our keep partnering with you. And I want to say this, uh, Mr. Beasley, Rick, that I definitely would love to have you on one of our platforms. I love to learn about your family's history in Black Wall Street. I think that those type of stories are important for us even today. So I look forward to um, that discussion. As was mentioned by Eric, the George Floyd death um, really was an inflection point. Uh, for a lot of us in terms of what is a black life really worth. Uh, but what I think we need to realize is that we need to do a better job supporting each other. And by the way, not tearing each other down because there's some of that that, that happens if we're being quite honest uh, with ourselves. So we need to do a better job of supporting each other. How often is our dollars circulating within our communities when, when we make it versus in other communities where they keep their dollars circulating, but in our communities, it jumps out pretty quickly. And to Shihiwa's point, we want to celebrate Black excellence because there's excellence in all industries within our community. And we should uh, do a better job of making sure that we're supporting and not tearing each other down. Uh, in terms of what we're doing as a chamber, uh, we're definitely focused on um, engaging with our resource partners. For example, we have an event coming up uh, with the county and other uh, local partners. We wanna help people to get certified to make sure that you have those opportunities. And again, going back to what she was said, to create equity where there, there clearly isn't uh, equity. Uh, that's something that we're focused on. Right now, I'm in talks with a, a major financial partner uh, that would that will result in creating uh, financing opportunities for our local uh, black businesses. So you will be hearing about that also relatively soon. Uh, we're just really uh, uh, focused on whatever we can do to allow you to be the best that you can be. Uh, definitely, thank you for being on this platform. I look forward to, to sharing the stage with these great leaders uh, sometime downstream. I'm really, really honored to be here. Thank you. Say, so, Anne Marie, if, if mm -hmm. I may, before we close out, I know we're getting past our time, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the South Florida Black Prosperity Alliance. I, uh, listen, I was going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, for those who are listening and uh, who don't know uh, what that is, South Florida Black Prosperity Alliance 
started last year in the midst of the fact that the onion was peeled back with uh, COVID and the death of George Floyd. Uh, there were several of us uh, who came together. Uh, uh, Commissioner Monestine uh, from Miami had the state of Black Miami a couple years ago. And there were several of us working on that. And then Shahiwa, along with Frank uh, in, 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 Bra in Palm Beach, we were working on issues from a chamber perspective. And then uh, Ruben Roberts from the NAACP and others were working on issues on how do we support black families and how do we support black businesses with the pandemic. So we all came together and we, we founded what's called the South Florida Black Prosperity Alliance because we're all impacted by the same systemic issues uh, across the board, whether it's Broward, Dade, or uh, Palm Beach. So we stay tuned uh, to learn more about the South Florida Black Prosperity Alliance. We're gonna have a symposium in at the end of September. Uh, we're actually coming up to Palm Beach to recruit some new membership on uh, September 17th. We working with Grassford, Grassford and uh, Frank Hayden on that. So uh, please stay tuned and maybe we'll have a, have a legacy uh, luncheon and, and talk about that as well one day. Absolutely. Um, and please get involved in the South Florida Black Prosperity Alliance. We need all the help and hands on deck that we can. Um, listen, this has been an amazing panel. Um, I know we can talk for hours on these various topics. Um, we definitely will be doing this again <laughs> with various updates. Um, I encourage everyone to please um, join. And, you know, I asked this before. Maybe a chamber pack, you know, where there's a membership for all three chambers in this chamber pack for one investment. I don't know. Let's figure it out. You know, let's <laughs> figure that out. I'd, I'd love to be, you know, a member of all of you. <laughs> um, so, but no, thank you so much. And, and please, really quickly, um, where can we reach each of you, your website, if you can drop that in the comments, but also just say it real quick, Shahiwa, how can our audience reach you and what's the website to join and get involved? Uh, the website is our, our name, Broward County Black Chamber of Commerce.com. You can find us on Facebook, um, Instagram. We're also on Twitter and LinkedIn. Just look for at Broward Black Chamber and you will find us you can also call us at 954-419-6557. Eric. www.m-dcc.org or 954, excuse me, 305-751-8648. Rick. Well, the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, we, and we I do encourage all of the folks who are listening to uh, become a member. Um, but also become a member of all of my respective uh, panelists here of their chambers. But the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, you can reach us at www.miamichamber.com. Uh, please ask for Lillian Ventura regarding GMG, GMCC Unites, which is our program that we've launched to give uh, a free membership uh, in partnership with one of the sponsoring members uh, to um, uh, to join the, the, the Greater Miami Chamber. So we look forward to having you all. Again, we also look forward to partnering with our other colleagues here, uh, the Broward, uh, again, Palm Beach. We're already partnering with Miami-Dade Chamber. We wanna enhance our relationship with, um, with Miami-Dade Chamber because they're doing some fantastic work. Awesome, Grassford. Thank you, blackchamberpbc.com. PBC for Palm Beach County. Our phone number, 561-282. 9657, our great office manager, Tracy Thomas, will assist you. And we are on all the social media platforms, very, very active in promoting our members and profiling them. So you've probably seen some of that if you've uh, been uh, one of our, our friends. So like our pages as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, stay with me one moment. I do have some quick announcements to make. Um, I want to once again thank our sponsors, Broward Health, AARP, the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County, and the African American Black Alzheimer's Disease Initiative at the John P. Hudson Institute for Human Genomics, University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. Please check out our current issue of our top educators in South Florida. And if you haven't already done so, please save the date for our next issue, 
where we will be highlighting South Florida's 40 under 40 Black leaders of today and tomorrow, which will be released on August 22nd in the Miami Herald and the Sun Sentinel, and of course, the digital version that you can uh, view at miamediagrp.com. Please remember to tune in to our show, Soul, hosted by Ms. Nikki Jellin every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., um, where we disseminate intellectual entertainment on fashion, arts and culture, relationships, mental health, and food in South Florida. And of course, if you have not heard the big announcement, I want to personally congratulate all of the MIA Media Group and Legacy Miami, Legacy South Florida for being honored by the 2021 Sunshine State Awards, where Legacy came in first place as a trade or special interest publication for surviving COVID-19 um, issue. So thank you to the Society of Professional Journalism, uh, Journalists Florida Pro Chapter. So congratulations, MIA Media Group, an award-winning publication. All right. And uh, kudos to Dexter and Russell and the entire editorial team for doing the amazing work that you do, and of course, all of our contributors um, that contribute every issue um, to uh, MIA Media uh, Group's uh, publication. So thank you all. And of course, uh, MIA Media is a sponsor of the National Black Economic Conference, which will be held on August 27th. Virtually, you can register at National Black Economic Conference Com. And you can also list your event and your business for free at blackbusinessloop.com and become a part of the directory. So thank you all for tuning in. Please share this video as always and make sure you save the day and join us again next Thursday at noon. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Big shout out to Dexter. Bye. Bye. <laughs>